Ever since it started, South Park has been pushing the boundaries of what was possible on television by delving into topics that were too taboo for other shows. This has led to many funny, offensive, and shocking moments, many of which would be considered very dark. And sometimes South Park reaches a new level of dark and twisted, even for a show notorious for that type of humor, which makes us wonder, which were the most messed up moments that have occurred in this quiet little mountain town? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and these are the darkest, most messed up South Park moments. As we said, South Park is an incredibly dark show from the start. This is a series that featured a child dying in almost every episode of the first five seasons as a punchline, so it took some time to narrow down this ranking. All right, let's jump into it. We're gonna start with one of the most popular episodes of all time, Scott Tennerman Must Die. You knew this was gonna be on here. If you're one of the few South Park fans who has yet to see this episode, it involves Cartman trying to enact revenge on a ninth grader named Scott Tennerman, who tricked him into buying his pubes. All of Cartman's schemes backfire, kind of like Wile E. Coyote attempting to take down the Roadrunner. Cartman gradually becomes hateful and malicious towards Scott Tinnerman as his plans get darker and more elaborate. This erupts in an ending sequence in which Cartman sets up Scott Tinnerman's parents for death, steals their bodies, grounds them up into chili, and unknowingly feeds them to Scott. This ending was a huge shock for many viewers at the time. While the series has definitely delved into equally, if not darker territory since then, Scott Tinnerman must die when a lot further than most viewers were expecting based on the first four seasons. Not only that, this is a character-defining moment for Cartman, as it's really the first time we saw how dark and psychotic he can be. He's gone from being the annoying fat kid who annoyed everyone to tasting the tears of sadness from a kid who just lost <laughs> and ate his parents. If that wasn't enough, episode 201 explains that Cartman and Scott Tinnerman are half-brothers, revealing that Cartman actually killed his own father, which only makes this moment so much darker. The next episode is Kenny Dies, where, you guessed it, Kenny dies. Except this time, Kenny was almost killed permanently until he was brought back one season later. After getting sick from muscular dystrophy, Stan, Kyle, and Cartman are informed that Kenny is most likely going to die from his disease, and Cartman studies stem cell research to save Kenny's life. While this is going on, Stan tries to come to terms with facing Kenny in his hospital bed. By the time he finally gathers the emotional strength, Kenny has already passed away, leaving Stan without the chance to say goodbye. Kenny's funeral is then interrupted by Cartman who reveals he used the stem cell research to duplicate a Shakey's pizza rather than helping Kenny, and Kyle just beat him senseless. This was largely considered to be the most emotional episode of South Park at the time, and for good reason. We all knew Kenny eventually came back, but for a while, we figured this was the last time we would see him. Even with that context, this episode manages to explore some very dark feelings with Stan coping with the death of his friend. Even Cartman's side plot of using stem cells to replicate a Shakey's pizza? Pretty morbid too. Alright, those episodes were dark but they outdid themselves with the episode, Butters' very own episode. Sweet, innocent, and lovable Butters always finds himself in some of the darkest situations, and his very first starring role in an episode is no exception. In this episode, Butters' mother, Linda, sends a young boy to spy on his father, Stephen, in order to determine what the best anniversary gift would be for him. Doing this reveals Stephen partaking in various gay affairs, which Butters innocently reports to Linda. Linda's mind breaks as she attempts to drown Butters in a river and enters Herself, both of which dramatically fail. Cold out here. Steven and Linda have never been portrayed as the best parents in South Park, but this episode really exposed how unhinged their relationship is. It's a good thing Butters is so naive that he doesn't let the events of the episode phase him in the moment. Even if he admits in the end, he was probably scarred for life. This was the first episode to introduce Butters to the main cast as part of season six, following the nearly permanent death of Kenny. Needless to say, Butters found himself in many more dark situations that followed, all of which can be traced back to this monumental episode. South Park has many holiday specials specials, but none tops Woodland Critter Christmas. This episode follows Stan being asked by a group of animals to help make a manger for the birth of their upcoming savior. Stan does so, along with killing a lion that threatens the critters, but is shocked to find that the Woodland Critters are actually Satanists, giving birth to the Antichrist. Stan then recruits the Lion Mountain Cubs to find out how abortions are performed, so they can remove the Antichrist from Porcupine's womb. You know, typical Christmas plot points. This episode is often praised as one of the greatest in the entire series for how well it contrasts dark themes with the lighter tone of Christmas. You can literally find Christmas song parodies and a rhyming narrator in the same episode that features some of the most screwed up themes and visuals in the entire series. It's later revealed that this is actually a story created by Cartman, which makes a lot of sense given how brutal yet innocently childish the plot can sometimes be. Next is The Return of Chef. 
The tenth season of South Park began with the creatures addressing the departure of Isaac Hayes, following the controversy of the Scientology episode from the previous season. Here we find out Shep has joined the Super Adventure Club to travel around the world. However, it turns out Shep was hypnotized by the club members into being, what's the most advertiser-friendly way to put this? Physically attracted to minors. I'm gonna make love to the children. Stan, Kyle, Carmen, and Kenny go to rescue Chef from the club, but Chef falls from a bridge and dies after getting impaled and brutally mauled by a lion and bear. Chef's death scene is very brutal, and the scenes prior featuring a hypnotized Chef talking about various vile acts don't make the episode any brighter. Obviously, this episode was made with a lot of malice, not so much towards Hayes, but towards Scientology, which is parodied through the Super Adventure Club. The end result certainly made for one of the most brutal death scenes in South Park history. While many darker episodes have been well-received by fans, Fans, there's one episode that was quite controversial, and that is Stanley's Cup. This episode was a parody of the Mighty Ducks and other sports movies. It follows Stan coaching a Pee Wee hockey team, who are performing very poorly. One of the team members, Nelson, is hospitalized with cancer and asks Stan to bring the team a victory to give him hope. The doctor even tells Stan that if he doesn't win the next game, Nelson will die faster than Steve Irwin in a tank full of stingrays. When the opposing team doesn't show up for a game, the Colorado Avalanche allows the Pee Wee team to step in for them during a game against the Detroit Red Wings. The Detroit Red Wings beat the kindergartners both literally and figuratively, and Nelson losing hope and dying in the hospital. No hope. No hope. This divided the fans, many of which thought it was too far to witness a dying child as a punchline. The next episode is Britney's new look. Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Butters find out that Britney Spears is in South Park and pretend to be her children to get pictures they can sell to the paparazzi. This trick causes Britney, who's already highly distressed from being constantly mocked and prodded by tabloids, to shoot herself in front of them. The celebrity survives, albeit with two-thirds of her head missing, and Stan and Kyle go to apologize, where they realize how crazy the paparazzi Britney has to deal with truly is. They devise a plan to take her to the North Pole, but before they can, they're cornered by the paparazzi, who reveal Brittany has been chosen as a human sacrifice for a good corn harvest. We want three tickets to the North Pole. The crowd proceeds to take pictures of Brittany until she somehow slowly dies before preparing to do the same thing to Miley Cyrus for the next harvest. South Park has made many episodes making fun of celebrities, but in this case, the show is oddly sympathetic toward their struggles. The satire was spot on, but this episode divided people because the journey was pretty grim. A lot of the time, it seems like the episode isn't even trying to be funny, and sacrifices humor to make its point clear and more impactful. It may have rubbed some people the wrong way, but it made for one memorable episode of television. Another episode that sacrificed humor to make a point is The China Problem. The A-plot for this episode is Carmen and Butters trying to stop the Chinese from taking over the world after watching the 2008 Olympics opening ceremony. That's all well and good, but the reason this episode is ranked here is because of the B-plot. Here, Stan Stan, Kyle, Kenny, Clyde, and Jimmy petitioned to have George Lucas and Steven Spielberg arrested for assaulting Indiana Jones with the release of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It may not sound like much, but the scenes with Lucas and Spielberg go on for a long time and are shockingly grotesque and detailed, even by the standards of South Park. Much like scenes in Britney's new look, a lot of these parts are dark and contain very little humor to speak of, opting to shock and disturb the audience. Trey Parker and Matt Stone claim this is because they wanted to replicate the feeling of pain and suffering they received from watching the movie. And finally, we finish off with You're Getting Old. This episode doesn't seem too dark at first, and more plays out like a typical episode, with Stan having a birthday party and seeing entertainment as poop as a result of him growing older. Normally, that would cause him to start enjoying things for adults, but instead, he sees everything as crap. The doctor diagnoses Stan with being a cynical butthole. What started off as a simple poop joke shifted into to an existential crisis, where he can't seem to be happy no matter where he goes. The episode ended on a very dark cliffhanger, set to landslide by Fleetwood Mac, that really hammers home Stan's depression. This episode was dark and emotional that many fans at the time considered this to be the announcement of the end of South Park, pointing out how the episode seemed to be touching on the creator's own depression from work fatigue. While Trey Parker and Matt Stone denied this being the case, it still makes for one touching, emotionally layered, and very dark episode of South Park. All right, guys, that's it. Let us us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters and your favorite shows. But most importantly, stay wicked.